Greetings, greetings. Welcome to the Weekly Awakening. Today we're going to go deeper into understanding the universal laws. And the universal laws are the laws that govern our universe. And these laws are universal because they apply anywhere to anyone at any time. And to help portray the universality, I will be pointing out these universal laws within different holy scriptures from around the world and from different cultures. And today we're going to be focusing on the universal law of cause and effect, which essentially means as you think, so you become. Our thoughts create our reality, and the manifestation of those thoughts is the effect. So this universal law is helping to point out the power of your thoughts which will help you to understand the necessity in knowing yourself and knowing your thoughts and becoming more conscious and more aware so that you can become more in control of the conscious thoughts that you have and using those to create your life so that your unconscious thoughts have less power and are creating less and less of the existence that you're experiencing. So the first Holy Scripture that I'd like to get into is the Dhammapada, which are the teachings of Gautama the Buddha from India who existed 2,500 years ago. And in the Dhammapada, the very first two verses describe the universal law of cause and effect. And it says, Our life is shaped by our mind. We become what we think. Suffering follows an evil thought as the wheels of a cart follow the oxen that draws it. Our life is shaped by our mind. We become what we think. Joy follows a pure thought like a shadow that never leaves. And I think that the Gautama the Buddha is portraying these two analogies to show you how linked our thoughts are to the creator. To the reality that we are creating. An ox that is tied up and harnessed to a cart can never, no matter how far or how strong it pulls, pull away from the cart. Our shadow, I have never once seen my shadow leave. You can look behind me and my shadow is still here. And so whatever thought that I create, a thought of sorrow, a thought of joy, that, that thought will manifest. It will fall, the manifestation will follow that driving thought like a cart on an ox, or like a shadow to a person. These, these thoughts within our mind are what shape our lives. The next Holy Scripture that I like to go to is the Bhagavad Gita, which is a poem found within the Mahabharata, which are a collection of books within the Vedas. And the Vedas are the foundation of the Hindu culture and the Hindu religion. And the Bhagavad Gita is a story about a young prince named Arjuna, who is with his family and about to engage into battle, with his cousins. He's with his brothers, the other princes, and about to gauge into battle with his with his cousins. And he's at odds with having to fight his cousins. And early on, he discovers that his charioteer is no other than Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is to represent God incarnate, God in manifested in physical form. And upon discovering this, he begins to ask questions about his life and life in general, and how one should lead their life to Krishna, and Krishna give, provides him with answers. And within the Bhagavad Gita, in chapter 8, verse 5 and 6, say, Those who remember me at the time of death will come to me. Do not doubt this. Whatever occupies the mind at the time of death determines the destruction of the dying. Always they will tend toward that state of being. And so this, this shows you how your thoughts create your reality, whether in this life or beyond. And so someone who is in a heavenly state of mind will die and, and move into that state of mind. They will move into heaven. A person who is tormented in life will die and move into a tormented state of mind. Gandhi even knew this. That is why after he was shot, he began to say the name of Ram over and over and over again. Ram, 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 Ram. Because he wanted the Most High to occupy his thoughts at the time of death. And I chose this verse in particular to help portray another aspect of the universal law, that it is universal at any time and at any place, at the time of death and even beyond this physical realm, into your existence after this life. And so next I want to get into the book of Matthew, which is in the Bible, which is a story portraying the life of Jesus the Christ, who lived 2,000 years ago. And in chapter 7, verses 1 and 2 say, Do not judge, so that you will not be judged. Your verdict on others will be the verdict passed on you. The standard with which you measure will be used to measure you. And so, the universal law of cause and effect. If you have judgmental thoughts, then you will create judgmental experiences. The way that you treat other people is a reflection of your state of mind. And so you will create those same experiences for yourself because that state of mind exists and it exists of the thoughts that you are creating. 
And so you will be creating that state of mind for yourself. So you can't help but be measured by the way that you measure others. So the next holy scripture that I'd like to get into is the Tao Te Ching, which was written by the master teacher Lao Tzu, who lived in Asia 2,500 years ago, which is the same time that Gautama the Buddha was in India. And within the Tao Te Ching, verse 16 says, Cause the mind of self to be empty and open, the center of being to be still. Then you will be able to perceive the 10,000 events that rise connected. Experiences and things grow and flourish in endless variation. And then once again return to the source. The source is stillness. From stillness comes the cycles of creation. From stillness they come alive. Alive and in motion in the continuum of consciousness. To know consciousness is known as enlightenment. To not know consciousness leads to misery and error. To maintain an all-encompassing, expanded consciousness leads to an open heart. To be open-hearted is to gain rulership of self. To rule is to be like heaven. To be like heaven is to be one with the Tao. To be one with the Tao is to maintain an eternal life of connected consciousness, free from exhaustion. If you cause the mind of self to be empty and open, and you cause the center of being to be still, then you will know the cycles of creation. And the cycles of creation come alive. And they will come alive for the continuum of consciousness, so that your consciousness can grow and flourish. So it says to maintain an all-encompassing, expanded consciousness leads to an open heart. That's what causes and creates an open heart. An open heart is the effect. And once you have that effect, it says to be open-hearted is to gain rulership of self. And once you cause that, it says to rule is to be like heaven. Now that you have caused that, it says to be like heaven is to be one with the Tao. And the Tao is infinite being, just like the Metuneter in Egyptian culture means Mother Nature. And since it is infinite, once you have connected oneness with it, then you as well become infinite, never to extinguish, never to be exhausted. And so it's telling you that if you create these things within your life, if you create this consciousness, then this is what will be produced step by step. And so this whole universal law is helping you to understand the importance of your thoughts and the importance of knowing your thoughts, which the ability of knowing your thoughts can be strengthened through practicing concentration and practicing meditation. Meditation meaning essentially spending time with yourself, going within. And concentration is simply just practicing holding your attention upon something. To focus upon something and hold your attention on it. Be it a candle flame, be it your fingertip, be it a blade of grass, be it a drop of water. Whatever it is, hold your attention and practice holding your attention. If your attention drifts, bring your attention back. And just practice these things every day and you will begin to know more and more of your thoughts and begin to have a deeper understanding of your thoughts and begin, begin to become more aware of deeper thoughts so, you be, so that the unconscious can be more conscious. You'll be more aware of things that you previously were unaware of. So that way you will be more conscious of what it is you are creating within your life and less unconscious of it. Because if the law of cause and effect is true, then that means that everything that I experience in my life, I have created. And a lot of times you probably see that, oh, I see how I created this job within my life. Oh, I see how I created this, this relationship within my life. But a lot of times people are like, well, how did I create this within my life? How did I create this flat tire in my life? How did I create getting fired within my life? I didn't create these things. More often than not, it is your unconscious thoughts that have created these things. Because nobody, con nobody consciously thinks, oh, I want to have a flat tire. Nobody consciously thinks, oh, I want to be fired. But it's those unconscious thoughts, thoughts like, I'm not worthy or I'm not valuable or I'm not good enough. Those unconscious thoughts will, will have you create experiences of not being valuable, not being worthy, not being good enough. So you get fired because you're not valuable, you're not worthy, you're not good enough. So become more aware of those thoughts so that you can change those thoughts and elevate them so that you can change the experience you have into more elevated and greater experiences. So I hope this video helped. I hope you learned a lot and I hope you put these things into practice to better yourself and better your life. Feel free to check out the website at www.awakenwithin.us. And if you like, hit the subscribe button below to keep up to date on all the newest videos. And as always, I leave you in peace.